In this video, I'll show you how to get Google Search Console data into your NADAN account, how to authorize the connection, and how to specify your parameters to pull in data. This allows you to pull any kind of data that you need from the Google Search Console API so that you can build agents and automations that help you optimize your website using Search Console data. It's pretty easy to set up and create the requests. And once you have the data, it opens up a lot of doors. For example, I can feed the data into an AI agent and create all kinds of optimization tools. So I'll show you how to do that really quickly within NADEN. I'll show you how to set up your authentication in Google Cloud Console. I'll even show you where to find the documentation for the API so that you can build your custom requests. And I'll share some tips that I found along the way. I'll also share this really simple example workflow that you can just copy and paste into your NADEN account to try it for yourself. So let's jump in. For the first step, I'm going to create a blank workflow and just call it Google Search Console for now. And then I'll need some kind of trigger. I'll just go with trigger manually. I can change this later. When you look for nodes, you might notice that there isn't actually a Google Search Console node. So we'll connect to Search Console using an HTTP request. And since this is Google data, we're going to have to set up an authentication to access the data. To set up the authentication, you just go to Google Cloud Console. If you don't have this set up already, go ahead and set up your console account. And then you wanna make sure that you have a project set up. If you don't have a project already, go ahead and create one. And then you're going to head over to APIs and Services. You can also access this from the sidebar. It's right here, APIs and Services. And then in the search bar here, look up Search Console and click on the Google Search Console API. Then you'll see this API page and you just hit enable and that will enable the Google Search Console API in your Google Cloud account. Next up, we have to create credentials. We're going to need an OAuth2 credential. I already have some set up in this account, but I'll show you how to create one from scratch. Click on create credentials up here and select OAuth client ID. And then for the application type, you're going to hit web application, then give it a name so you remember what it's for. Put NADN or something in it so that you know that this is an OAuth credential for your NADN account. And then you're going to need an authorized redirect URL. So to get that, we go back into NADN. And then we're going to go into our authentication method and we're going to select predefined credential type. And you're going to want to select Google OAuth 2 API. And you can see in my account, I already have some set up, but I'll create a new one here. You can rename the credentials by clicking on the name up here. And now I've got my OAuth redirect URL. Click copy to clipboard, and that will give you your OAuth redirect. And we're just going to paste it into our authorized redirect URL list. Now that I've added the URL, I just hit create, and it's going to give me a client ID and a client secret. So I'm going to take these and copy them to my credential. Here's my client ID, and here is my client secret. And then we need to specify the scopes, which is the permissions that it's allowed to do within our Google Cloud account. For Search Console access, there's two main scopes you'd want to do. So the first one is Webmasters, which is just full access, and then webmasters.read only means that it can only pull data. I'm going to set it to full access for this example. I'll just be messing around with personal accounts. If you're working with more sensitive data, you can do read-only access. And once you've entered your scope, we're going to head back to Google Cloud Console and just hit OK. And that is going to create the credential for you. You can see the new one that I created is right here. Back to NADN, and I have to sign in to authorize this connection. So I just hit the sign in button and I allow the application and you should see that the connection was successful and now you've got your authentication all set up. So now I'm going to do a simple HTTP request where I'm going to ping the search console API and just try and get a list of sites. So to do that, I do a get request and this is the URL that you want to do. So it's googleapis.com slash webmasters slash v3 slash sites. 
and you don't need to configure anything else. And after hitting execute step, I get a list of all of the sites that this account has access to. In this account, I've got eight sites and this one here, remote teamer is the test site that I've been working on. So this confirms that the connection is working and that I can now pull in data from Google Search Console. So now let's get some real data from Search Console. I'm adding another HTTP request node, and this one is going to be a post request. And now I'm going to pull in the query analytics. So this is the URL that you want to send your data to, slash site URL, slash search analytics, slash query. And I'm going to swap out site URL with one of the sites that I pulled in the previous step. So to do that, I'm going to take the site URL parameter from the previous step and add it to my URL. Now I just need to fix it. I'm going to take this site URL parameter and replace it in the URL string like that. So now we have the full query and it's specifying the website that we're going to pull data for. Then for authentication, we're gonna do the same authentication that we just set up. And this time we're going to specify some parameters. So I'm going to toggle send body on, and then we're going to build the body parameters using JSON. This is an example of what the parameters might look like. The start date and end date specify the date range. And in this case, it's all of August, 2025. The dimensions specify how you want to group your data. So in this example, I've got date, query, page, country, and device. Row limit is how many rows to return. 25,000 is the max. If you want to learn more about how to format your body parameters and all of the types of fields and data that you can get, you can look at the Google Search Console API documentation. This will show you all of the fields you can use and how to format your requests. AI tools like ChatGPT are also familiar with this API. So if you're trying to get specific data, just work with ChatGPT or your favorite AI tool to create the perfect HTTP requests for pulling in your Search Console data. The node executed successfully, and now I've got a ton of data to work with here. In this case, it's grouped by date and by query and by page and by country and by device. And then we've got our stats like clicks, impressions, click-through rate, and position. So now I'll try simplifying this request. I'll take out country and device, and I'll just group it by the dimensions date, query, and page. So now I'll rerun this, and I should get simpler data. And here is my data grouped by date, query, and page. There's all kinds of options that you can do to pull in the exact data that you're looking for so that you can build specific workflows that use Search Console data in a variety of ways. So now I could build my workflow out further. For example, I could connect an AI agent to this workflow, and I can feed it specific data to work with and add a prompt in specifying how to work with the data and what the output should look like. Then I can build out a full workflow that uses Google Search Console data as part of the steps. So that's how you get Google Search Console data into N8N. It's really quick and easy to set up, and then it opens the door for tons of possibilities for creating agents and automations that use your Search Console data to optimize your site. I'll post the JSON example for this workflow so that you can try it out for yourself. That way you can import it into your N8N account and start messing around with Search Console data, and then you can start building workflows that use your Search Console data. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.